Hey there, welcome to TPUSA Live. I'm John Root, sitting next to brand new TPUSA contributor, Joe Bob. How you doing? Can't complain, man. How are you? I'm just living the dream. Now that you're sitting on this couch, first time being a part of the open of the show. This is my first time and I am honestly petrified. <laughs> this is when you know I'm you're- not entirely sure what to do with my hands. Oh, you should probably put okay. those down. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is when you know you've really made it. You're a part of the open of the show. Yeah, and sitting <laughs> here with the great and fabulous hair of John Root, and also John Root is here. Wow, what a dream, huh? <laughs> hey, coming up next, we've got Human Events Daily with Jack Posobiec. He's talking about how anou announcers from NBC will not be traveling out to Beijing, China to cover the Winter Olympics because of COVID-19. See, I want them to not go because of, I don't know, slavery that's happening in the Xinjiang province, but yeah. I don't know. Can, can announcers do the job from across a continent? It's tough. I mean, they've been doing it for a good while now. Probably a lot of these announcers are used to it, but mm, probably yeah. watching some of your favorite teams over the past few years, they're doing that from their studios, wherever their headquarters may be. So if you're watching your favorite team, like Golden State Warriors or something, a lot of the time they were doing it from their studios in San Francisco, a little bit farther away, and they're watching on a monitor. So it makes their job incredibly more difficult, and I think the production value really goes down. Well, obviously, because you, you, you miss the ambiance and the noise of the crowd and the rumble of competition. Mm -hmm. You don't get that if you're sitting yep. behind a TV. You're basically me watching the game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's extremely difficult, and I think it's going to make the Winter Olympics, which we shouldn't even be there for, in I'm my personal watching. opinion, I don't think a lot of people should watch at all, but I hope our athletes are safe because I know there's oh, yeah. a lot coming out saying that if they criticize the CCP whatsoever, they will be punished. So yeah. I just hope that our athletes are okay. All athletes are going to be fine. Win some gold medals and we'll find out weeks later because I'm not really going to be watching. Yeah, yeah, seriously. <laughs> He's also going to be covering the Ukraine officials shocked as President Biden basically gives the green light to Russia incursion. Yeah, uh, that was nuts yesterday. Uh, for people who don't know, actually, they should watch Jack talk about it because yep. a dumb guy like me isn't going to break it down nearly as eloquently <laughs> as Jack Joe Bob's not does. a dumb guy. He's just <laughs> not as smart as Jack, and neither am I. But that's a, that's a crazy situation that's going on in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And what the president said during his press conference yesterday would have me freaked out if I was in Kiev. So we'll see what happens, I guess. Yeah. But I'm excited to listen to what Jack has to say. Also, there's a new Ashley Babbitt video that shows that she mm. was not a part of the violent mob. That and 5G craziness, wow. talking about how that could be affecting flights and the supply chain. We've talked about that on the couch a little bit. But Jack Vasovic will give you a great breakdown of that and so much more. After that, sit on the couch with MAGA Hulk Stephen Davis, <laughs> Joe Bob, and also TVUSA Ambassador Drew Hernandez, an investigative reporter. Oh, nice. Oh, it's going to be great. Drew's going to be here? Drew's going to be here. I love Drew. You probably saw Drew if you're watching the Kyle Rittenhouse case. He mm -hmm. took the stand, and he's one of those investigative reporters that we're so happy to be partnered with because yeah. he does some incredible work. And basically because of the work he did out there in Kenosha, yeah. that probably changed the trial. Yeah. Definitely. You were able to get real truth behind this. Thank God for independent journal journalism. Amen to that. Yeah. And then we're going to be talking about President Biden's one year in review. It's but review it, time, baby. Man, I just had my one year review and I felt like it went pretty well. And I could say here, here were some successes. Do you think and it went better or worse than President Biden's review? I would say pretty much don't. everybody's one year review when you talk to your boss probably went better than President <laughs> Biden's. But Why? If, what happened? But if you were just listening to President Biden, you mm -hmm. wouldn't think that things weren't working oh, out. Oh, no, because it, it, the thing is, people listening to press conferences, if you listen to what the politician actually says, uh, it's a bunch of fluff and nonsense. But if you watched how he said it, that was kind of scary. Yeah. The uh, mental capacity there might be lacking just a little bit. <laughs> oh, we got Jack Posobiec joining us, too. He's going to talk about Ukraine, give us a little bit more of a breakdown there. Yeah. And we are going to taste test and give our ratings for Gir Girl Scout cookies. I, I have a problem <laughs> with that, that I'm going to be voicing hmm. my opinion later on with the Girl Scout cookies. I didn't realize that like, Girl Scout cookies would trigger you, Joe Biden. There are a lot of things that do it. Uh, this is not highest on my depth chart, but... I have some issues. <laughs> and then we got a weekly show. We got Benny on the block. We're going to show one of his best episodes out in Florida, talking about how basically gas prices just skyrocketed out of nowhere, and he wants to give or get a take from all the Floridians out oh, there. I hadn't noticed. <laughs> and then politics with Alex Clark. She's going to talk about the Jamie Lynn Spears media tour drama. Mm. Kanye West wants to beat up 
Pete Davidson in his new the song. Only one. <laughs> and then there's a Bachelor in Paradise pregnancy, Pop Culture Rewind, and so much more. We got a great live stream for you today, though. Coming up next, you want to meet David with Jack Vasobic, Joe Bob, John Root. We'll see you soon. You want to see an example of failed socialism? Go to an Indian reservation. Um, a lot of the soldiers were very um, aggressive, so the women did get raped. Well, the means a place of suffering, dying, starvation, not, nothing good. I didn't realize how corrupt things were. I didn't realize what kind of environment we were living in. We had no running water, we had no um, power. They de-incentivize people from, you know, opportunity. That's why our suicide rate has climbed up astronomical rates. I think that's what I'm also projecting to my people, even if I have to fight you to save you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard today's edition of Human Events Daily, powered by Turning Point USA. Today's first story, an exclusive and a shade war update. I know it's been a little while. We've got another one for you. The Biden White House is actively seeking confrontation with Moscow to restore credibility. We're going to break it down. We've got a data dump from a White House staffer to human events. Next, Ray Epps is set to testify on Friday. We'll explain it all. Third, the Israeli vaccine chief has come out and admitted that vaccine passports are ineffective and don't stop the spread. And then finally, CCP factions are intensifying their feud ahead of the Olympic Games. All this and more ahead, Human Events Daily. Well, today we do have an exclusive report here on Human Events Daily on the Ukraine crisis that is now being exacerbated by President Biden and staffers within his administration. Human Events Daily can exclusively report we got a data dump last night from a White House staffer that has insight into everything that's going on. Now, I told you before that this administration is going to be using Ukraine as a way to wag the dog. Now, what is wag the dog? Wag the dog is when you are faced, when an administration is faced with a domestic crisis, crippling failures of their agenda across the board, just like the Biden administration is experiencing now. And I said this last Friday when I said today was the end of the Biden administration, because it was, for all intents and purposes, they have negative political capital. And I said, what are they gonna do? They are gonna use this crisis in Ukraine they are gonna use the potential of an armed kinetic conflict, sending Americans over there, the sons and daughters of the deplorables to be in harm's way over this border dispute as a way to restore their credibility for their domestic and international agenda. And then lo and behold, what does White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki come out and say next? So let's be clear. Our view is this is an extremely dangerous situation. We're now at a stage where Russia could at any point launch an attack in Ukraine. Uh, and what Secretary Blinken is going to go do uh, is highlight very clearly there is a diplomatic path forward. It is the choice of President Putin and the Russians to make whether they are going to suffer severe economic consequences or not. So here's the data dump from last night. And I'm going to read this verbatim to you, directly message to me from a White House staffer. Biden is now at Condition Eagle, which means hourly updates. DOD and state are working 24-7 on appeasement options, but it's getting nowhere. Biden wanted to send Sullivan and Bonnie Jenkins to Moscow, but no response from the Kremlin. Dead silence. Austin has been consulting with Panetta and Carter. And both of them are saying, just let him have what he wants. Yet Ron Klain, the White House Chief of Staff, is running around thinking that he is Patton, saying that we need to mobilize UCOM and publicly commit to defending Ukraine by military force. He thinks that Biden can be, quote, the leader who defeated Putin. The divide is strikingly deep. Kamala, Vice President, 
wants to avoid armed conflict in an election year. And yet President Biden is demoralized on the foreign policy front and anxiously wants to regain some credibility. So he is leaning more towards confrontation. Meanwhile, Secretary of State Blinken is on President Biden's side because he is still on the, shall we say, crap list from last September when, with the fall of Kabul. It is a complete clown show, end quote. They want to mobilize the United States military to get into a confrontation with a nuclear power in Eastern Europe over a border dispute that's been going on, sure, for 30 years since the fall of the Soviet Union, but when you really look at the dispute between Kiev and Moscow, this is something that goes back hundreds of years. There has always been territorial tension in Eastern Europe, and this is something that they are looking to work out. This is not, and I repeat, not a national security concern for the United States of America. Yet when it comes to the Biden family, we know very well why it is that the Biden family cares so deeply about Ukraine. What's really going on behind the scenes is that people like Tony Blinken, right? People like Victoria Newland, Jake Sullivan, Jonathan Finer, these were all people who served in the Obama administration. That's when you saw the Maidan revolution that overthrew President Yanukovych. That's when you saw Petro Poroshenko, who by the way is an oligarch, become the president of Ukraine because they wanted to bring Ukraine into NATO and they wanted to bring the Ukraine into the EU. That is what they consider unfinished business. And they realize that they're really only going to have a couple of more months of a free hand to do this stuff because it looks like the Congress will not be on their side come next year. So what are they gonna do? They're trying to run the table to finish their unfinished business in Ukraine, working with the oligarchs over there, like the ones that were behind Burisma, like the ones that were given Hunter Biden $50,000 a month for his expertise. We understand what you're doing here. This is wag the dog, and you are going to get people killed in Ukraine the same way that you got people killed in Kabul. Mark my words. Well, 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 this Friday, none other than the man himself, Ray Epps, is going to testify before Speaker Pelosi's special select committee on January 6th, Ray Epps himself will be in person. Now here's a very interesting situation. Ray Epps met informally with the panel in November and told them that he had no relationship with the FBI. But I'm confused because we're told that Ray Epps, who was an Oath Keeper in Arizona, Oath Keepers of course have been uh, charged with seditious conspiracy, for the events of January 6th, we were told by none other than Congressman Adam Kinziger, who got into it with me on Twitter, said, no, 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 we talked to Ray Epps, he cooperated, and I, I quote him. Kinzinger said, we thank Ray Epps for cooperating with the committee. And yet now we find that Ray Epps didn't actually fully cooperate with the committee in terms of testifying, right? You see, this is what people like Congressman Kinzinger do. They use weasel words to get out of things. He didn't, notice he didn't say he testified before the committee. He said Epps cooperated with the committee. So what he's doing is he's misleading you to make you think that Epps testified before the committee. He's giving the impression that Epps testified before the committee. Everyone who read the story and reported on it certainly got the impression that he testified. That's what was implied by the congressman. And yet now we've got the story out of Politico that says he didn't actually testify. But now on Friday, that he does intend to sit for a transcribed interview on Friday with the select committee investigating the attack on the Capitol, as attorney said in a phone interview. All right, so let's go back to the tape. Let's go back and look at why it is that people have so many questions about Ray Epps. This is from January 5th, the night before January 6th. Tomorrow, we need to go into the Capitol. Into the Capitol. No! 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 Peacefully. Fed, fed. 
From Politico, Epps has kept a low profile since former President Donald Trump's allies began promoting a theory that Epps had helped foment the attack. Their claims stem from videos taken on January 5th showing Epps urging Trump allies to go into the Capitol with you know, members of the protest, uh, an exhortation that some in the crowd quickly booed and responded to with chants accusing Epps of being a Fed. Epps quickly added that it should be done peacefully. Epps was also seen in footage just before 1 p.m. on January 6th at the front of a line of Trump supporters who were among the first to breach the Capitol barricades. He whispered something into the ear of Ryan Samsel, who has been charged as one of the first defendants to breach secured Capitol grounds. But Epps did not appear to join in the violence, and his lawyer says he was never in the Capitol building, key factors in the Justice Department's charging decisions. So here's what I don't understand. If you got a guy here who, and I, I said this last week when we talked about Ray Epps, I was there on January 5th doing stand-ups. And in, you know, the stand-up is when you, you know, interview people in the crowd, man on the street kind of stuff. I remember seeing him with that, that big over shirt that he had. And I remember him getting into it with people in the crowd. And I went back and we looked at the archives and we didn't actually have any footage of him, you know, doing this because we weren't, you know, we were at the Freedom Square is pretty big. So, you know, this was stuff that was going on in a different area. We were looking at people and talking to people that were right in front of us, very dense. But I do remember seeing this guy and seeing him have an altercation. Now, that must be, you know, I've, I've looked at that video where they're screaming fed, fed, fed at him you know, to see if you can see me. And I was with a camera guy uh, who were there that day, but you can't really see us in the background. It's dark, et cetera. But Obviously, there were a lot of people out on January 5th. The question on everyone's mind is, if this guy traveled across state lines, right, which I know, I know, we're not talking about Kyle Rittenhouse, we're talking about what? The Riot Act. The Riot Act literally states, and this was my response to, S to uh, Congressman Kinzinger last week, that if you cross state lines with the intent to foment or incite a riot, that you have broken federal law. That is the point of the Riot Act. That's where we get the phrase, reading the Riot Act, read him the Riot Act. So my question then is, for the DOJ, for the FBI, for everyone who's involved in this, why is it that people who've been walking around peacefully, people who are protesting, people who uh, committed no violence whatsoever have been arrested in this or accused of committing violence when there's no evidence of it, you'll go after them, but you got a guy here who very, very directly seems like he's instigating violence. He's also, by the way, specifically, specifically urging people even 24 hours prior to go into the Capitol. And yet he gets away with just an interview. And oh, you know, don't worry about it. He didn't do anything wrong. Explain it, like, 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 make it make sense. <laughs> What's the line? Make it make sense. Break it down for me. Explain it to me like I'm five. Why is it that Ray Epps gets a pass? And did he, as we know, by the way, that many Oath Keepers had connections with federal informants and federal agents, did he potentially have any of these connections as well? We need to see a transcript and this testimony on Friday ought to be in public. We know it won't be. So this story came across my desk today and just really was something that I said, I gotta get this out there. People need to hear this because this is one of those ones where, you know, it's something normally that people, they think about and they question and it's on everyone's mind and yet you never hear one of the quote unquote experts actually admit it. One of them did. Unheard.com, the headline is, Israeli vaccine chief, we have made mistakes. The cathartic response that you get from hearing just one of them admit that mistakes were made, that things could have been done better. Professor Cyril Cohen talks herd immunity and his pandemic regrets. Listen to this, just an incredible, absolutely incredible. Freddie Sayers uh, got the interview on this on her.com, listen to a, a snippet of it. That vaccine passports should be got rid of, phased out, because they're no longer relevant in the Omicron era. I, I yeah, I tend to think so. And that's also something else, you know, this is, you know, we, we have to look at the future. We need better vaccines to prevent transmission. 
I mean, I'm all for a nasal vaccine, for example, that would be able to better mimic the immunity that we get from the disease. And uh, we know, even, even if the Omicron actually is causing a lot of, uh, you know, breakthrough, uh, not breakthrough infection, but reinfections, you know, people that were vaccinated and, you know, secondary infections, et cetera, et cetera, we have to take into account that still the virus is better at immunizing than the vaccine, but. Sorry. And the stuff coming out of this is just incredible. Uh, so Professor Cohen is head of immunology at bar -Alan University and a member of the Advisory Committee for Vaccines for the Israeli government. In the forthright interview, and it is a forthright interview, he admits the Green Pass vaccine passport concept is no longer relevant in the Omicron era and should be phased out. What does that mean? Vaccine passports are irrelevant under Omicron and they should be phased out. You know, no big deal. Uh, he and his colleagues were surprised and disappointed that vaccines did not prevent transmission as they had originally hoped. The biggest mistake of the pandemic in Israel was closing schools and education. He apologized for it. Widespread infection is now an inevitable part of future immunity, otherwise known as herd immunity. Omicron has accelerated the pandemic into an endemic phase in which COVID will be like the flu. It will be just another one of those things that's out there. It'll become seasonal. Seasonal. It'll be something that you can catch, but you can deal with if you have a strong immune system or if you have immunity from antibodies. Some of the key quotes, and this one just, just I mean, I don't even know if we can say this. Like, I don't even know if we can say this. But I, I want to be very clear. I am quoting from Professor Cohen of Barlan University, who is an advisor to the Israeli government, professor of immunology. With Omicron, where we don't see, where we don't see virtually any difference, there is a very narrow gap between people vaccinated and non-vaccinated. Both can get infected with a virus more or less at the same pass. Herd immunity is a consequence for me. It's not an objective, it's not a goal. There is a thin nuance here, if I may say, that people have to grasp. I'm not saying people should go and get affected. I don't think that this is a model that we need to adopt. What he's saying is that herd immunity is now inevitable, which a lot of people had said early on, a lot of people had said that early on. And then finally, um, you have to understand that the green pass is not necessary, and that it's not a secret, it's not necessarily, this is incredible. The Green Pass was not necessarily to prevent transmission, that the vaccine passports were to encourage people to get vaccinated. It was a coercive measure. So he's admitting that the vaccine passports were not done. I'm here in Washington, D.C., where there is a vaccine passport mandate regime in place. I am unvaccinated, yet I've had COVID, so I have immunity. So I can't go out right now in D.C., to any of these places. And he's saying right there, it's a coercive method. It has nothing to do with stopping the spread. Chairman Xi Jinping is about to be named chairman for life of the CCP, the ruling party, the regime of China. You know, it's interesting because in the United States and in the West writ large, we have a ruling class, but we don't have a name for it, right? You know, so there's just this sort of ruling class, administrative class, establishment. There's many different terms for it, but there's no definitive body that we can directly point to and say, well, that's a member of the ruling class. But in China, they don't have that problem. In China, they have the CCP, because you can see them right there. There they are. They're the CCP. If you're a party member, you're a member of the party, you're in. We have the same situation in the U.S., but we, you know, we don't like to talk about it. I digress. Prior to Xi Jinping, the last several chairman of the party, Jiang Zemin, Hu Jintao, both served two terms, or excuse me, one 10 year term each. What does this mean? Xi Jinping, who came to power in 2012, his 10 year term would be coming up this year. But that's not happening, is it? No. He hasn't named a successor yet, which he should have at the last party conference, the 19th party Congress. This is the, you know, these big conferences that are held by the CCP. And so two years ago, should have held, should have named a successor, didn't. This time around, they're going to make a change and they are going to name him chairman for life. These upcoming Olympics are a coronation for Xi Jinping. 
And why shouldn't they be? He has ridden all of this to his success. Listen to Xi Jinping at Davos, the World Economic Forum, with Klaus Schwab just this week. We now welcome His Excellency Xi Jinping, President of the People's Republic of China. Professor Klaus Schwab, ladies and gentlemen, friends, greetings to you all. It is my pleasure to attend this virtual session of the World Economic Forum. In two weeks' time, China will celebrate the advent of spring in the Lunar New Year, the Year of the Tiger. In Chinese culture, tiger symbolizes bravery and strength, as the Chinese people often refer to spirited dragon and dynamic tiger, or soaring dragon and leaping tiger. To meet the severe challenges facing humanity, we must add wings to the tiger and act with the courage and strength of the tiger. Now there is factional infighting within China, even within the party itself, within the CCP itself. You have two major factions right now, Xi Jinping's faction and Jiang Zemin's faction. Jiang Zemin, the previous chairman prior to Hu Jintao. And Jiang Zemin, he was one of the technocrats, right? He was a technocrat in the mold. He was directly appointed, right, directly chosen as the successor to Deng Xiaoping. Deng Xiaoping was the one who said, we need to move away from economic communism and move to more of a, of a mold of a model of state capitalism. And that's what they have now. So it's state-controlled capitalism, CCP-controlled capitalism is what China has. Uh, I saw somebody once mention it. They said it's like, some days it feels like you're in the United States, and some days you're like on Wall Street, and some days it feels like you're in North Korea. That's the reality of the People's Republic of China right now. And so Jiang Zemin and the rivals and the factions are trying to turn up the heat, and they're publishing all sorts of op-eds out there saying we need stability, we can't go along with this plan, we can't have anything, but Xi Jinping is 10 steps ahead of all of them. And here's why. They didn't call out Xi Jinping and his leadership of the party vis-a-vis -vis the COVID-19 outbreak, the Wuhan lab, Xi Jinping rode that to victory over Jiang Zemin's faction. And mark my words, this November, Xi Jinping will win, his anti-corruption campaign locking up his opponents will win, and he will be declared chairman for the rest of his life of the CCP. Ladies and gentlemen, another action-packed episode of Human Events Daily, and that is why you turn in here for your daily briefing every single day. Remember our motto to you, be good, be brief, be gone. We are going to give you this high level news, analysis, information that you need in less time than anybody else out there, I guarantee it. But remember our homework for each of you, leave us your five-star review and then go and share this with one of your normie friends. Be the influence agent. Go out there and say, hey, you know, there was a great story I caught, human events, uh, he had this awesome take on Ukraine, what's going on with the Biden White House, this other thing on the CCP, the Olympics, what's going on over there, really interesting. You should probably check that one out before I go. Today's moment of history, January 19th, 1983, the butcher of Lyon was arrested in Bolivia, former Gestapo official Klaus Barbie, responsible for deporting Jewish children from Lyon to Auschwitz. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, you have my permission to lay ashore.
And so ends today's transmission from regime-occupied national capital here in Washington, D.C., turning it over to the free state of Arizona as Turning Point Live continues from the couch. Take it away, John. Well, thanks, Jack. Hey, everyone. Welcome to TVUSA HQ in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm your host, John Root, and this is TVUSA Live. Here's what we're going to cover today. First, Starbucks won't be asking for your Vax cards, only your gold cards, and more in the daily briefing. Next, Jack Posobiec joins us to discuss President Biden's comments about Russia and Ukraine. Then we introduce you to the newest members of the Professor Watch List. And finally, a one-year review of President Biden, followed by taste testing and rating Girl Scout cookies in one last thing. All right, enough waiting. TPSA Live from HQ starts now. Authentic, unfiltered, grassroots content and conversation every weekday. Live from Phoenix, Arizona at the Turning Point USA headquarters, this is TP USA Live. Welcome back to TP USA Live at TP USA headquarters in Phoenix, Arizona. Blue Blazer Gang and wow. uh, wait, Blue Blazer. Blue Blazer. Wow. Joe very, Bob, very, very, uh, good. very good. Drew here. Hernandez. Yes, very good. Like the Spider Man meme uh, where everyone's pointing at each other. Did you not get the memo, Stephen Magahold Davis? I don't like you anymore. Wow. <laughs> We're not friends. So you won't be hearing a lot from Magahold today. <laughs> nope. Because uh, he's not wearing a blue blazer. <laughs> but we're so excited to have you. Once again, we got Drew Hernandez, investigative Let's reporter, go. TV USA Let's ambassador, go. Joe Bob, TV USA contributor. And even though you're not wearing a blue blazer, Magahold, Stephen Davis, TV USA contributor, we're glad to have you. All right. We got the daily briefing. We got to fill you in on a few stories you got to know about. Are you guys big coffee drinkers? Because I, I don't drink coffee yeah, much neither. at all. I think no, I've had I, coffee maybe like three times in my life. I'm so, a gold card member. That's what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. that's oh, exactly cool. what we're asking. About because, that. <laughs> <laughs> because after the mandate was shut down in the Supreme Court, Starbucks followed suit and said, nope, we are not going to require the vaccine at all. So they're not requiring employees to have the vaccine or wear face masks at all. So there's going to be weekly testing and announced to their employees on Tuesday. And I hope maybe someone from Starbucks should probably talk to someone from Carhartt. That would probably <laughs> oh, be good, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Shots right? fired. I, I wonder, like, how much would it suck to have been an employee there who was looking at losing their job, right. getting it, and then, like, what if somebody got it two days ago before exactly. they made this announcement? That would have not been cool mm. at all. Yeah, because they were planning on requiring employees to get it by February 9th. Yeah. But once it got mm -hmm. shut down, they have almost 230,000 employees <laughs> across the country. Or if Dang. you were someone that lost your job. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what about all the people that lost their jobs because job they didn't want to comply? Mm. And then here we are a couple months later. Oh, by the way, actually, yeah, you could, you don't have to get jabbed. You, you, but sorry. JK, yeah. just kidding. Right? It's okay. Come on back. Oh, my bad. You already fired. Okay. Here's a free Moving drink on, on us. <laughs> exactly. well, once you give up freely your medical information, too, they, right. they aren't required to give it back because I know someone that works in anthropology and they were scared that oh my gosh if I'm going to keep working uh, here I got to get the uh, vaccine so some people got it and then they had a team meeting later I have a friend of mine that was on, on that team and team leaders basically said you know so uh, after the supreme court thing uh, <laughs> I'm not going to require it anymore never mind sorry and then it's just like uh, get back to work Okay. Jeez. Are you That's kidding it. me? Should have never it, got that far. Yeah. Exactly. In the first place, exactly. Should have never got that far. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then a heartwarming story. We actually have a 98-year-old World War II veteran received their high school diploma. Oh, so that's cool. Just yeah. a few weeks before yeah. he could graduate from high school in 1943, <laughs> Donald Hasinga was drafted into the U.S. Army Holy for God. World War II. So during his service, he parachuted out of a plane, became a prisoner of, prisoner of war, actually, and spent eight months in a German POW camp. Wow. But almost 79 years later, the 98-year-old from Texas was finally able to get his high school diploma. I know we're going to show some of those photos, too. So there he is, finally getting that high That's school awesome. diploma. You cannot beat that. And it's crazy because it's been so long mm -hmm. since he's been in high school that it's no longer called Auburn High School anymore. It's called East Sac County High School. Huh. So but something like that. Luckily, someone that's served our country well, finally getting that high school diploma. Yeah. And probably back in the day when high school was a, a good place where you really got <laughs> educated. And talk about a real courage 
I could not imagine sending some high schoolers right. to, oh. to fight for our country right, right. now. That guy yeah. deserves more respect than the woke generals we have right now actually mm-hmm. serving in the military. I'll yep. just say that just out the Point game. Point blank, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. awesome, though. Like, that's so, that's, it's just, you're right. It's a heartwarming story. You don't mm-hmm. get a lot of those nowadays. We, we need more of that yeah, nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Goodness mm-hmm. gracious, with all the doom and gloom that we've been seeing in on, a, on a consistent basis, seeing something like that, that is fantastic. And like you were talking about, you know, it, it's it, the, uh, the sense of duty that you had back in the day as, a, as someone going into the military, serving your country, you know, a, a prisoner of war. Yep. Yeah, that's that's huge. Okay. Coming back and, and, and finishing what you started, that is just, that's amazing. I love it. Yeah, because it seems like our military members just don't get the respect that they, right. that they deserve. Right. And unfortunately, it comes from woke generals like you've talked about. And obviously, President Donald Trump at the Winter Gala had a few things to say about General <laughs> Milley. <laughs> he, he, didn't, he didn't mince his words at all, but a lot of these military members, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place at yeah. times. And we even covered... <laughs> Uh, some military members out here that weren't allowed to worship their God because they were unvaccinated. Everything that they've gone through, I have good buddies that are in the Air Force too, it's unbelievable, but love stories like this because we want to give you some heartwarming stories too because there is a lot of doom and gloom. (laughs) We're always going to talk about COVID, we're going to give you updates, but there's heartwarming stories like this about people that really do love our country. But coming up next, we got TPUSA contributor and the man that knows everything going on about Russia and China, Jack Posobiec, is going to join us. We'll see you in 90 seconds. (laughs) Good ranchers straight from the American farm. 100% American meat, 100% of the time. Delivered straight to your door. Wait, are those my good rancher steaks? I'll be taking these. Claim your 10 free Bistro Filets with your next order with promo code TPUSA Live at GoodRanchers.com. Welcome back to TPUSA Live. We got Joe Bob, Drew Hernandez, and MAGA Hulk Stephen Davis. And we're going to be joined by, in just a second, Team USA contributor, host of Few Events Daily, Jack Posobiec. Talk about what's going on with Russia and Ukraine because. Mm-hmm. A lot of you probably seen the clips. Maybe you watched the whole two-hour press conference for President Biden talking about how Russia invading Ukraine would just be a minor incursion. Mm. And we need to get to the bottom of this, so we're going to bring in Jack Posobiec. Jack, how you doing? John, what's up, guys? You know, I don't know if I quite got the blue blazer memo, <laughs> but I got, you know, I'm, I'm like a Navy blue because I'm a Navy guy, so I've got the Navy blue blazer on. So happy to join the rest of you. And uh, once again, just, you know, very, very disrespectful, Stephen. I have no idea you know, why you <laughs> something like this on such an auspicious day as this, the first year anniversary of President Biden's inauguration. It's despicable. That Absolutely. was the occasion, actually. Yeah. That was the occasion. That, that's the big, that's this is our presidential that. blazers. To celebrate. You know what? I got my presidential 2A all day. Let's go. <laughs> you understand me? <laughs> but Jack, can, Jack, what was your initial response? Because I know you were live tweeting this press conference, and it was a disaster from the start. Mm. Obviously, there's a reason he hasn't taken questions, because you're going to get answers like this. But well, I think we, we all saw answers. that reason. <laughs> Yeah. What, was your, what was your initial reaction? Well, you know, going in as far as the press conference itself, you know, at first I thought that this was something that, you know, the White House and the comms department, Saki and Steve Reschetti and Ron Klein, the chief of staff had put together. So you expect that he's going to be well 
um, prepared for all the questions, that he's going to be totally up on things, that he's going to have good answers, or at least at least some kind of set boilerplate kind of answer uh, as to what the administration's position is on specific topics that might be brought up during this. However, as the press conference kept getting longer and longer and longer, you realize <laughs> that these questions, and you saw James Rosen of Newsmax ask it about this question about cognitive uh, decline for the president, that you realize that, oh, I see what's going on here. He's trying to prove himself. He's trying to prove people wrong. This is like, and you, you see this happen, by the way, especially with older men, is that they refuse to believe that nature, biology, life is taking place. And it, do you remember when, uh, when President Biden was trying to run up the stairs really fast on Air Force <laughs> One? He had, that, he had that little trip. He had that stumble, oh, right? Yeah. So and you're so saying he's not trusting the that. science, Jack? Is that, is that what you're saying? <laughs> it's, well, it's, I was saying he doesn't want to trust the science. He doesn't want to believe in aging. He doesn't want to believe that this stuff is going on. And so he still thinks that he's that, you know, that um, spry, young, you know, 29-year-old elected to Senate from Delaware guy. And it's just, look, you've been in D.C. for 50 years, and time takes its toll on everybody. That's part of life. We all need to accept that. We're on a journey uh, from, you know, from our creator and back to our creator. But, you know, he's not trying to understand that. And so now he's going to push himself further and further into situations like this. And it's really a bad situation. But that's honestly what's going on. And if you're Jen Psaki, you know, the press secretary, you've got to be wondering, why haven't you pulled the plug? You know, you walk up there at some point, normally, you know, if you're staffing a senator or a congressman or a president like that, you'd go up and you'd say, well, that's, uh, you know, it's all the time. President, very important meeting coming up. You know, we've got to meet with the, uh, you know, the leader of Afghanistan and, uh, have a nice <laughs> right? you know, but that never happens. And so you re I realize that this is a situation where, you know, uh, old man Joe must have been yelling at them like, um, you know, kind of like when your old neighbors had a few and he's yelling at the neighbor kids for playing on his lawn, getting a little too close to his fence. You know, that's basically the situation we found ourselves in. But the difference is this isn't our neighbor. This is the commander in chief. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jack, so I got a question regarding the minor incursion thing. When he's talking about, well, we don't know what we would do specifically. Maybe we'd act differently if it's a minor incursion. Obviously, Jen Psaki had to walk that back immediately. But that's not the first time that he's misstated foreign policy. Remember in his town hall a couple months ago, he also said that, I think he said we would definitely come to the defense of Taiwan, which is not the position of the United States. How dangerous is it for uh, President Joe Biden to be on the, the global stage misstating foreign policy with the United States and how we interact with our allies and also enemies. Yeah, so in, in the diplomatic game, you know, words matter a lot. And uh, Joe Bob, I know you come from, you know, a DC background as well. So you understand how important words are when it comes to diplomacy and certainly in terms of military conquest or military engagement. Look, we understand how this goes, right? And, and I'll just explain for people who don't know that sausage is made. President Biden was probably in a briefing, you know, either a day before or a couple hours before where he was told, look, this is what our red line is. We can't allow Russia past this. But publicly, you know, you have to say mm -hmm. the borders of Ukraine are insoluble. We will not allow one foot set across Russian soil. But internally, he understands that this is a border dispute that's been going on between these breakaway provinces. They say, look, we don't want to be associated with Kiev anymore. We feel that we are more autonomous and that there's Russia-backed separatists inside. It, yeah, obviously, it's a very complicated situation. And so when he sent Blinken over to Kiev, and Blinken has just landed, Secretary of State, a couple yeah. of hours earlier, totally undercut his negotiating position because he, what he did is he revealed the fallback position of the United States instead of, you know, hemming and hawing and compromising or finding a, a middle ground with Putin on this. No, instead, he's just revealed literally all the cards in his hand and basically said, even if Russia were to take those two provinces that have been trying to break away, the United States will probably only respond. And a lot of people watching the situation have said, look, you know, there's probably just going to be some sanctions, maybe some banking stuff. There's some talk about uh, kicking Russia out of the SWIFT system, though Bloomberg had a report earlier today that that might be taken off the table. So it's really a bad situation. Look, he's playing poker and he just gave the other side all of his cards. I mean, going off of that, then, is we've heard so much about China and Taiwan, like you just said, and now we're hearing Russia and Ukraine. So it seems like if there's a fight on one front, it seems like another superpower would be empowered to maybe go after their enemy. At so the same if, time. At the same time. Yeah. So how would do you think would we would respond, let's just say, if 
there's a invasion of Ukraine, and then China's obviously going to feel like, well, it's our time to take out Taiwan. What do you think we would do? Well, when it comes to to China right now, of course, the Olympics start in about two weeks, and these Beijing Olympics, uh, you know, make no mistake about it. Let me be perfectly clear. This is the coronation of Xi Jinping, not only as chairman for life of the CCP, but crowning him as a superpower and certainly a regional hegemon vis-a-vis -vis Asia. We have not done a good job of keeping up with our commitments to our allies in Taiwan, <laughs> South Korea, or Japan to prevent this, and that is because of the economic relationship. This is why you've got you know, the co-owner of the Warriors out there saying that nobody cares about the Uyghurs. What do you, and actually, I think what he's saying is, is that because of the economic relationship, look, he's just the only guy out there who's saying it publicly, right? They all believe this. He's, he's you know, sp telling the truth, right, when he says this. He's telling the truth that nobody, when it comes to uh, social media, when it comes to the tech giants, when it comes to Washington, when it comes to Wall Street, they don't care about the Uyghurs. They care about making money, and they care about <clears throat> selling into the market of the PRC. And if that means going through Xi Jinping, then they're going to do it. And if that means that Biden's going to kowtow, look, NBC has pulled, you know, their reporters mm -hmm. from covering the Olympics. NBC isn't sending reporters to cover the Olympics because of Omicron, but we're still sending all of our athletes to go and get this. You know, they pulled athletes from Zika when it was in Brazil, right? So if a Taiwan situation were to happen, it would definitely be after the Olympics. But at the same time, the real question is, would the United States come to their aid from that aggression from mainland China, from the CCP, or look, if, if you're sitting there, look, I, I said kind of flippantly earlier today, but if I'm Taiwan, fire up the subs and just start mining the straight right now, because <laughs> you know, it's, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah, because I know that Joe Scarborough from Morning Joe said Putin, Xi and NATO allies, they see Joe Biden as weak. And I think that's where this really hurts us here and hurts some of our allies that think like, well, will the United States come to our aid? It's like, we don't even know how strong the United States is going to be in the first place because you don't hear that two hour press conference and have some sense of security that we would really be able to help and that the person at the helm, the commander in chief would be able to make. I don't the right feel decisions. safer. Yeah, I don't feel safer after that. <laughs> I don't feel safer about my family, about my kids, about my family in Eastern Europe after that. Absolutely not. These people want us to get into a shooting war with Vladimir Putin, with this guy who can't even string two sentences together at the helm. This is a disaster. It is a disaster waiting to happen. And mark my words, if they continue on this path, they're going to get people killed the same way they got people killed in Kabul. Hey, Jack, to Drew, um, can you explain to the viewers, I know it's a very basic question, but why is it important that the commander in chief, the president of the United States, displays not only a sense of power, but an appearance of power? Can you explain why on the world stage? Okay, domestically, it makes sense. Everyone's like, let's go Brandon. He's losing his mind. Can you explain why on the world stage with the sphere of intelligence, you have the CCP, you have other uh, foreign governments that are studying the president of the United States while he speaks. Can you explain why it's important that we don't have a president that looks like he's losing his mind, literally? Well, I mean, you look at this, right? You know, people were, you know, talked about our previous president and they would say, look, this guy's chaotic. He, you know, we can't predict what he's going to do. We don't know what's happening here. But at the same time, go back and look at the world situation. ISIS was not heard of for years prior to one year ago today, right? When essentially they were, you know, instrumental in the takeover of Kabul in many ways. Um, or at least in terms of attacks on U.S. soldiers. Then you had a situation where East Asia, totally at peace, were making deals with North Korea, working on bringing those two sides of the peninsula together. You can only achieve that through strength and stability. And so that strength and stability of saying, look, this is, you know, Teddy Roosevelt, right? Walk tall and carry a big stick. So you've got to have that stick there. You've got to be able to use your mouth to use your voice to say, look, I'm going to send forth with these commitments, but should anything happen, I've got this. With uh, our current president, there's no credibility. There's no threat, there's no fear. There's no one looking at him and saying, you know what? This guy's intimidating. I don't think we should mess around. It was the exact opposite one year ago today. And that's why you're seeing what you're seeing in Afghanistan. That's what you're seeing is in Kazakhstan. That's what you're seeing in China and Taiwan, all around the world, Ukraine, obviously, of course. My only question, though, for Rachel Maddow would be, why didn't Putin invade Ukraine when his puppet was in control of the White House for all the last four <laughs> years? It just doesn't make any sense to me.
Uh, Jack, I'm curious, and, and I'm asking genuinely, I don't actually know where to stand on this. Given that uh, Russia is going to invade or is looking to invade Ukraine, and Ukraine isn't really in our backyard, we have Germany, France, the UK, a lot of countries that have that <clears throat> problem happening in their own backyard. Why are we always the forefront? Like, why is it negotiations between Russia and the U.S. and not Russia and Germany, Russia and France, Russia and the U.K.? Is there any reason behind that? Why, well, why actually, should we be so concerned? That's a very prescient question, and I'm glad you asked it, because just earlier today, Germany, France, the U.K., and the U.S. had a meeting on the sidelines of NATO, hmm. and they basically said, the European country said, we want to put forward a statement vis-a-vis -vis Russia and Ukraine that does not involve the United States. We want to put out a statement that is European exclusive, Euro exclusive. So what does that mean? We are now starting to see divisions within NATO because even they view this as overly belligerent. They say, look, we don't want to get into a shooting war with Russia in winter, by the way, especially mm. right after the pipeline from Russia to Germany just came in. It's the middle of winter in Europe, too, especially in northern Europe, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if that's where the gas is coming in, if that's where the power is coming in, this guy can turn it off. We're not interested in doing that. And so maybe we can come to some kind of diplomatic solution. Meanwhile, you've got Biden and Blinken over there being as belligerent as possible. And so, you know, the way to really look at this frame is to say these are breakaway provinces. This is a border dispute that in, in some ways goes back 30 years to the fall of the Soviet Union. In other ways, goes back hundreds of years to the uh, the territorial tensions between Moscow and Kiev that have been going on for a very, very, very long time. And so the question is, of course, Moscow wants to secure their access to the sea. Russia is largely, in many cases, uh, almost a landlocked country, if you really look at their access to the open waterways. And so the situation becomes, you know, is this something where they're trying to reconstitute the Soviet Union, as the media would have you believe, or is it something where they're trying to work with what they have in the geography that they have it in? Hmm. And quickly, as we wrap up, we got about a minute left, Jack. What kind of repercussions does this have for generations to come? Look, I think this is a situation where President Biden and really that entire stream of neoliberalism, that form of politics, it's on the way out, right? He is our Boris Yeltsin uh, <laughs> in many ways, you know, maybe sans the drinking problem. But, you know, I think <laughs> people are going to look back at him and say, man, how did we ever elect that guy? Mm -hmm. Well, Jack, thank you so much. And once again, too, can you tell people where they can follow you to make sure they get all the updated information about what's going on? Yeah, here of course. The Russian podcast Ukraine? is uh, Human Events Daily, of course, every single day here on Turning Point Live. You can find me uh, Twitter, Getter, Instagram, Facebook, whole nine yards in terms of all of that. So it's keep in there our motto to you be good be brief be gone we are the whole day's news in just about 25 minutes well jack thanks so much for everything you're doing once again everybody follow jack that is the place to go for all the updated information about what's going on here with russia and ukraine thanks so much jack yeah appreciate it john take it easy take care guys thanks yeah. guys. But yeah, as we, as we wrap up here it's once again i'm so glad we have someone like jack yeah he's uh, great no, break this down yeah. yeah, because awesome. that's that's what we need is people yeah. like Jack that have the sources, have the connections, and break it down for you. In and, blue <laughs> and the blue jacket. In the blue jacket. Professor Watchlist next. See you soon. What if I told you that this has all happened before? The riots, the violence, the church burning, attacks on police, destruction of private property. My name is Sammy Stein. I am a Holocaust survivor. This is the reality of what happens when you have capitalism that goes to socialism. El socialismo no funciona. El socialismo no funciona. Team USA Live is about to be spicy, spicy, spicy. I mean, would you expect anything less? It's me, Alex Clark. Of course it's going to be spicy. Tune into The Spillover, my brand new podcast. Think of it like the older sister to politics with a lot more conservative. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's up, guys? My name is John Root, and every week I'm breaking down the top stories in sports and bringing you conversations you won't hear anywhere else. It's going to be a great time here on Breaking.
Welcome back to TPUSA Live. Drew Hernandez, Joe Bob, and the guy without a blue jacket on. Mag Hulk Stephen Davis. That's because I'm on the right. I don't do the blue. Ooh. Even though I have a blue hat. Oh, Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that failed. But that least, failed miserably. At least it wasn't as bad as the press conference we heard yesterday. This is true. <laughs> But now we're going to break down the newest members of the Professor Watch List. And if you are a member of the Professor Watch List, it's because you're the worst. Because you <laughs> are pushing pretty much. Cards? We actually should we make should membership send them cards. some. That cards. would be fantastic. I am a member of the Professor Watch List at TPUSA. Yes, indeed. This should be <laughs> like <laughs> this should, it should be like a punch card. <laughs> for like oh, there just, you go. There you go. Offenses. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But this first one, this is Dr. Dr. Edward Fuller. He's an assistant professor of education at Penn State University. His research includes education, mobility, turnover, career pathways, education preparation, school improvement, and get this, charter schools. Oh. So I know we're going to show a photo of Dr. Edward J. Fuller here up on the screen for you. There he is. There's Dr. Fuller. And... This is when it starts to get a, a little cray-cray, as Here the kids would say. He looks less crazy than some of the others. This is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is true. Yeah, because we know when we shared last week oh, when goodness. we had the professor talking about the – write this uh, whole essay about the Taliban. Like, why, why basically right. they're justified. <laughs> he looked crazy. Dr. Foley doesn't look crazy, but you know he's crazy by his Twitter account. Mm. So this is what he's put on his personal Twitter account that has now become private. <laughs> he called for drunk drivers, get this, to run over unvaccinated parents. <laughs> wow. The, the he put this on his Twitter. And this is a tweet right here. Why so is, is his account still up? <laughs> I know, his, right? His account is now private. This is what he said here. Why is it a parent's right to endanger the lives of other kids and of teachers, maybe people wearing masks should just drive drunk and speed through the neighborhoods of pro-COVID parents as a way to exercise, I guess, their wow. freedom and rights. Uh, you see, this is what's this is what's interesting is you see Twitter. You guys remember the famous podcast with Joe Rogan and Tim Pool, and they yep. were going back and forth yeah. with mm -hmm. Twitter mm -hmm. and Jack Dorsey. Mm -hmm. They say the same thing always, over and over again. The reason why we suppress certain speech is because we want to keep people protected in the real world. Mm -hmm. Someone could say something on the platform, and it turns into real world violence, and then yep. we're responsible, mm -hmm. right? But only if it's like a right winger. Oh, of course. <laughs> you see stuff like this. You see stuff like this, yeah. and that's that's actually credible. Yes. Because yeah. there are seriously mentally people, Ill, uh, mentally ill people out there mm -hmm. oh, that yeah. read stuff like oh, this. Yeah. You get extremists like Antifa or BLM. Mm -hmm. They see stuff like this, and they're like, "Well, if he's allowed to say it on Twitter, and he's a educator, mm -hmm. maybe it's a good idea, and I can maybe get away with it." But it. Twitter keeps it up. Yeah. Like I could honestly say, like this is a disgusting thing to think about. But yeah. he could be like the Waukesha massacre. He could be like, no, that right. maybe that's okay if he ended up running over unvaccinated people. Mm -hmm. You could right. see someone like that saying that. Right. Mm -hmm. And then also too, so this tweet was in response to pro-choice activist Corey A. DeAngeli's opposition to mandatory masking in schools. So and just look at how we hear the word triggered. Look how triggered someone like this gets. This is not, oh, I just disagree with you. Mm -hmm. Let's sit down, have a round table discussion. I want these people dead. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we've heard from the left. We've heard that, that rhetoric and it's disgusting because <clears throat> we now know that cloth masks don't work. Mm -hmm. We've known that for a long mm -hmm. time, but finally they're admitting it. And then now we're hearing about natural immunity. Finally, mm -hmm. yesterday from the CDC came out with a paper about that. But we have people here that just want the unvaccinated or the unmasked dead. Yeah, and they're teaching at universities. It's the mass formation cult. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Mass formation psychosis is not a conspiracy theory. The AP, after Dr. Robert Malone went on Joe Rogan's podcast and talked mm -hmm. about it, the AP tries to <laughs> fact check it and say, oh, it's actually not real. Not real and you thing. take a look at the fact checkers that our AP is using. It's a guy that quotes Joseph Goebbels. <laughs> You know that 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 is the master of propaganda, yeah. the Nazi master mm -hmm. of propaganda in Nazi Germany, the mm -hmm. head of the Ministry of Propaganda. That's who the AP is using to try and tell you publicly on Twitter that mass formation psychosis isn't real. Right, it's real. That, that proves right it. There. Look, at, look at that tweet. I mean, the, the, to say that <laughs> if you don't have the mask, if you don't have the vaccine, you're it, it, that's because that's the essence of life. Apparently, that's the that's the fountain of life. In so much that if you don't have one, you're better off dead, not just dead, but killed, mm -hmm. ran over by a drunk Murder. driver, murdered. He's advocating. Mur how is that? Not, how is that not taken down? How is that not labeled as as uh, uh, a threat of mm -hmm. some sort to people like me? 
I mean, yeah. this is ridiculous. I can't believe that something like this is considered legitimate. But when we get out there and say the same thing that that, that these uh, uh, oligarchs, these big tech oligarchs, are now giving the pass to about natural immunity and things that you were just talking about. That's okay now because they've given the pass to that. But if we say it without them giving the pass, it's misinformation. We get shut down and shut up. It's unbelievable. And then I know this tweet was soon deleted after. But in general, like we have the receipts here. And then I know even, even Jack Basovic, we just had on the show, host of Human Events Daily and Team USA contributor. He was calling for a quick call to action. So he called out to the Mothers Against Drug Driving on Twitter. That's <laughs> what he said. Hi, M A D D online. Do you have any comment? on this professor here encouraging drunk driving through neighborhoods with children. And it's, once again, too, we've yeah. seen parents under attack. Uh -huh. We've seen A.G. Garland, what he's done, oh. just sick the FBI on parents that are pushing back against gender, mm -hmm. any sort of critical theory, mm -hmm. and then people like this still have jobs. Yeah. So, and then once again, too, the reason we have professorwatchlist.org, the team here does a fantastic job if you went to Penn State or you're supporting Penn State financially, that's got to end. Yeah. If they're going to have people like this teaching these classes and trying to set them up for careers, mm -hmm. it's just indoctrinating these people to go into their workplace and think that these mask mandates are okay. These vaccine mandates mm -hmm. are okay. What Carhartt is trying to push is, is okay. Hmm. It's wrong. And then this next one we have here, too, is Dr. Timothy Scorn. He's from the University of South Dakota. He's the director of international studies and associate professor of political science. We got a photo of Dr. Timothy Scorn. There he is. I could use some Rogaine. His research and teaching interests include international human rights and Middle Eastern politics. And he is openly pro-critical race theory in both media and his personal life. And according to Scorn, this is what he has to say. You have to look at the institutionalization of slavery. You look at the laws and policies on voting requirements and moves to restrict voting access. You look at mandatory sentencing and which classes of people that affects the most. Certainly poor, generally minority communities are affected more than the white middle class. This almost sounds like a President Joe Byron as a professor. <laughs> this sounds like Mr. Stephen Davis. Take it away! Man, I cannot stand. <laughs> this is the white savior complex in full swing, and I cannot stand out. And, and, and that's why I love about the, the professor watch list, is these people are in charge of teaching our kids. And when you have mentalities like this gentleman, when you have, which we, and the other gentleman we just got through talking about, it's very scary that these people are in charge of, of teaching our kids, and this is the stuff that they espouse, mm -hmm. you know, denigrating people like me saying that I'm below this and I'm below that. Like, I can't make it on my own with, uh, on the, uh, you know, as we always say on the right, you know, pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps. They don't speak about anything like that. They just say that you're marginalized and it's up to me to help you. And they, uh, I just, it, it, it drives do, me up a wall. It really does. Do you think that some of them are aware of that? Because I feel that too. Like when, when people talk about, well, the minority community uh, needs our help. Do mm. you think that they know that the other side of that coin is, well, they're clearly less than, which is why mm. we need to help them? I don't know. Do you think they're aware? I think so. one hundred percent. I think they're aware. Oh, okay. I, I one hundred percent think so, and I think that you know that's the whole essence of the white savior complex mm -hmm. is they feel better about themselves in lifting their hand, you know, yeah. putting their hand down, mm -hmm. right, to try to pull you up, which means I'm above you. Mm -hmm. I'm above you in the first place to so put my hand down to pull you up, and it's it's just ridiculous that they really think that this is what it is when it comes to the interactions between uh, different races, especially with uh, white and black. It's unbelievable. Well, I think it just totally disregards where we've come from, too. Like, mm -hmm. we're finishing up in just about a minute that, obviously, we have a tough past. But look at where we are now. Yeah. The freest, most prosperous, most tolerant country in the history in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that's the thing that they don't want to bring up, the, the fact that we've... Uh quote unquote progressed. I mean, we have progressed in, in, in the, the right sense of the word, um, but we are not a racist country. And they, you know, they're gonna push the 1619 uh, Project and Nicole Hannah-Jones, all that type of stuff. But that's detrimental to the United States of America. That's de detrimental to us coming together uh, cohesively as a country, but they don't want any of that at the end of the day. They want classism, they want Marxism, and that's what they're gonna continue to push at these uh, uh, different universities. And then Dr. Scorn, he feels so empowered that he's gonna keep this going. I know he oh, tweeted that it. out too. He's like, I'm gonna put critical race theory in all my classes. There you have it. He's gonna try to insert that in absolutely everything. And that's what the left wants to do. Wants to be in your daily life, your career, mm -hmm. everywhere. Coming up next, Biden's one year review. See you in 90 seconds.
Hey everybody, how are you doing? My name is Osiga Kaku. I'm from the great state of North Carolina, and I'll see you at freedomsquare.com. My name is Preston Para, and we'll see you at freedomsquare.com. Hi, I'm Kyle Clare from Bloomberg, Illinois, and I will see you at freedomsquare.com. Hi, I'm Mackenzie. I'm from Fayetteville, Arkansas, and we'll see you at freedomsquare.com. Hi, I'm Johnny Richardson. I'm from Prescott, Arizona, and I'll see you at freedomsquare.com. I'm Rachel. I'm from Dallas, Texas, and you'll see me at freedomsquare.com. I'm Soraya. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, and I will see you at freedomsquare.com. My name is Michelle DeGroote from Los Angeles, California, and I'll see you at freedomsquare.com. Hi, my name is Emma Faye Redken, and I'm from San Antonio, Texas. I will see you at freedomsquare.com. Join us in the fight for freedom. Welcome to Freedom Square. Welcome back to TV USA Live. MAGA Hulk, Stephen Davis, Joe Bob. I'm very you, excited. This is great. Go, Drew Hernandez. It is time to go off on President Biden's one year. It's a one year anniversary today. Happy anniversary. This was the worst year I think I, I have definitely ever seen in my lifetime for a president. And once again, too, you wouldn't know it from President Biden. You would have thought that this was the most successful year a president has ever had. He exceeded expectations, <laughs> according to him. And I know when that got tweeted out, I said, well, you know, he wasn't lying because we knew it would be bad, but we didn't know it would be this. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> what was your initial reaction watching that two-plus-hour press conference <sighs> two yesterday? Two things. There's so much to pick out, but I, know. I, I think the two things uh, didn't talk about the border as much as they should nope. have. Yep. That is probably arguably one of the worst things going on right now under his watch mm -hmm. um crimes against humanity taking place down there uh people being trafficked on a daily mm -hmm. basis right. the cartels making millions of dollars a day the, the list goes on no one wanted to talk about that of course um but i thought it was interesting that it's like the left is trying to prepare for what could come in the midterms mm -hmm. a massive l yeah. mm -hmm. right <laughs> because because they're massive. like are are, are mm -hmm. it, are you guys suggesting that, you know, the results of the upcoming midterms may not be legitimate? Mm -hmm. And he's making all these points as if that's kind of where he's going with this. Mm -hmm. But here we are coming out of 2020 where they're being accused. Everyone on the right is being accused of what they're saying about the election. Oh, no, that's a conspiracy theory. They're crazy. Our, our elections are amazing. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with them, even though coming out. But of, also they're not right. <laughs> but, they're, but they're not. And now here yeah. we are. They're like. That's what I'm saying. It's like this like mind game that they play, and it's so short, such a short amount of time. Yeah. Just one year later, they're starting to prepare their base to not accept the upcoming midterm election results. That's just like, crazy. And, and you remember when he won that night, and he was talking about how he just wants to have like a United States of America again. He wants everybody to come together. And it's like, well, think about this. Your VP literally called you racist mm -hmm. when you were both running for the Democratic nomination. I was on, that on girl. the left. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then here, you're trying to blame everything on conservatives mm -hmm. and people on the right. And the only reason things are so bad is because of the previous administration and then who we have on the right side of the aisle, in Congress, in the House, wherever it may be, you have the majority, President Biden. You have it, like you, you have it you have it there. Wasn't like, he asked that yesterday? One of the reporters because 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 President Biden came out and he was like, well, part of the reason why I can't get anything done is because my Republican <laughs> colleagues, uh, you know, they don't want to help me. But then a reporter comes out and is like, you say that, but did you forget something? Mitt Romney said like you're not reaching out to anybody. You're not reaching out to any, so how does that make any sense? How are you gonna get anything done on the other side of the aisle if you're not reaching out to the other side of the aisle? And I'm just like, are people not watching? <laughs> like, do you hear this? Do well, you hear what they're saying? They're saying two different things. He's saying, they don't wanna work with me, but I haven't even reached out to them. I haven't even asked. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I will say, though, it is tough to hear him. It, it's tough to understand what he's saying. Oh, and yeah. then when he whispers, it's really tough to hear. What are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> Very few schools. Wow. Close. <laughs> wow. It's like, <laughs> no wonder they can't hear him. <laughs> he, d he, does that, he does that thing, and it's just like, oh, no. You, I could guarantee everybody a part of his cabinet, like, oh, no, he's doing it again. It's like that slow, like, here comes the whisper. 
Mm -hmm. Yep. Here you, it comes. Hear me. Hear me. Did you watch the whole thing? I tried. Because we were down here. Uh, <laughs> I gave it a I great say I tried. <laughs> we were down here doing this in the middle of it, but I was reading, I didn't hear any or didn't read about any single question about crime either. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about the way people craft their lives, mm -hmm. they, I mean, people care about bigger issues mm -hmm. like, uh, I don't know, what's going on in Europe and all of these other things. But the reality is people craft the way they look at the world through what's going on in their own backyard. Yeah. Crime is through yeah. the freaking yeah. roof, yeah. and nobody <laughs> asked him about that yesterday. <laughs> it, nobody. What do we actually care well, about? Because also, too, I feel like if you're going to ask all these questions, we probably need about five, six hours. <laughs> <laughs> There's been crisis after crisis after crisis. And, and I think scheduled naps. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. That was actually brought up yesterday, too. Like, in the middle, he was like, I've been here for, I don't know, like an hour. Uh, how, you guys want to go another hour or two? And they're like, yes, we will stay here for the next few hours to talk to you. Yeah. He's like, well, I'll stay for another 20 minutes. And they're like... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Peter Ducey from Fox News is like, well, I'm not going to get called on. So you guys, you guys just ask whatever, whatever you're going to ask. But obviously, there's pre-planned who he was good at pick on. Mm -hmm. They told him to pick on these specific people. Mm -hmm. But it seemed like there was a lot of softball questions too, especially when it came to COVID. Mm -hmm. And he said there was a really successful response. But remember, this guy here, President Biden, said he's not gonna shut down the economy, he's gonna shut down the virus. Mm -hmm. And then he even said, we're gonna take care of this, I will end this. How do you have the most deaths from COVID yeah. and try to say that this has been successful while still trying to blame the previous administration? Yeah. There's no death counter anymore on CNN, right. all over the place, where they want <laughs> right. you to forget about these things. But it doesn't matter how many times you say this has been a success, it hasn't been a success. You yeah. cannot gaslight the American people. Mm -hmm. You really exactly. cannot at the end of the day. And, and, and we're, you know, the, the inflation, right? We're seeing the gas prices rise. We're seeing no uh, food in our shelves, no products. I mean, it's, it's an absolute crap show. And when you try to explain that to people, well, actually, I'm glad that most people are seeing it now. Because a lot of times, it's, you know, a lot of people don't see it. It's, it's, it's you know, uh, neither here nor there when it comes to them. But in this situation, they're actually living it. Mm -hmm. They're finally living it out, and they're seeing it for themselves. So you can't, you can't gaslight the American people, and you, there's nothing to hide behind at this point. Mm -hmm. It's a joke. He's a joke. You know, mm -hmm. I remember under President Obama, there were documentaries coming out talking about, like, the bubble. You remember all that yep. where, you know, with the Secret mm -hmm. Service mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you're just in this bubble the whole time. President Biden has taken that to a whole other level. <laughs> I, I, he's in a bubble that the I don't bunker. even like. Yeah, yeah like, I don't think he understands Basement. what's going on. Yeah, a right. Newsmax yeah. reporter asked him during the conference, the American yep. people, a high percentage of the American people are literally believe that you're on a cognitive decline. Yeah. And he's like, why do you think that? And Biden's response was, I don't know. Yeah. That's your answer? Like, you're the leader of the free world and people are worried about your mental stability right. and that's your answer? You can't you even say, look, know. you can't even lie and say, yeah. I just got checked four hours ago <laughs> and I'm fine? Like, I don't know? Yes, yes. It's concerning, Stephen. It's very concerning. <laughs> and then I think, we, I think we actually have a video of that, too, so talking about his response to that question. I think we can throw that up right now. There is no way to get out of Afghanistan after 20 years easily, not possible, no matter when you did it. And I make no apologies for what I did. Have you guys seen, have you guys seen the meme <laughs> with Lisa Simpson where it says, the same people that took 20 years to replace the Taliban with the Taliban are now fighting the war on COVID? <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's what we're dealing Whoa. with here. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I don't know. Uh. Wow. He makes no I apologies. make no apologies. Imagine the That's slap in the brazen. face. That's yes. Yeah. To those who have died. Who, yeah. uh, mm. I make no apologies. No. He doesn't care. That, that's it. Lack of empathy. Care. Well, remember when he checked his watch, too? There was that photo yeah, of him right. taking the watch where it's like, yeah, when is this ceremony going to be over? How disrespectful is that? It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I think people need to understand how he's... The question being asked, especially when it comes to that Afghanistan, that clip that they just played, the question that's being asked is not the question that he's answering. 
he's defending my position to leave. And it was like, no, 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 we're not talking about mm -hmm. that. We're talking mm -hmm. about how yes. you decided yes. to leave. Yes. So I'd like to see him answer that question because he's continuing to answer, he's continuing to defend a position that nobody's Nobody taking. Yeah, yeah. And so the, mm -hmm. as far as Afghanistan goes, that's what I want to hear. Yeah. What do you, do, so do you think you made no mistakes in that process? I understand that you don't think pulling out was a mistake, mm -hmm. but in the process, you don't think there was no Nothing any mistakes done wrong. made. Yeah. And if that is what he believes, we have bigger problems. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, and then once again, too, it's it's a distraction and deflection technique. Mm -hmm. Where it's like they don't want you to talk about this stuff. It's really bad. I was listening to the interview between Glenn Beck and President Trump, the last one he just mm -hmm. did, I think, at the end of last year. Um, and Glenn Beck revealed that they were privately flying people out of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. He was raising money. He raised millions of dollars through Blaze TV mm -hmm. to get that done to help people. Mm -hmm. And he revealed in the interview that there were some servicemen that they got on those planes to save. That's a disgrace. Yeah, that's yeah. absolutely mm -hmm. terrible. That's horrid. That's a disgrace. Yeah. Like, how does how does it, how do you get to that? Like, I, if it was in my power, I would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But the American yeah. military, the, the the United States itself, can't help its own its own. Remember, too, we like still that. have people out in Afghanistan stranded yeah. right now to this day yeah. as we speak right now and yeah. we cannot we cannot forget that but it's goes to show over this just one year 365 days mm -hmm. that we can forget about things we don't want you to mm -hmm. but because there's another crisis and there's a crisis yeah. on top of another yeah. crisis mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. we have to remember that yeah. so i i would love to hear just somebody just ask I, i'm sure peter Ducey would have just like Please tell us just just one thing. One, do you think has been a success? Sure. Just just one individual thing. I don't know how he'd answer that. Mm -hmm. he's, he's failed at everything that he seems like he put his hands to. I mean, even looking at the uh, immigration crisis on the southern border. I mean, that's not being addressed at all, mm -hmm. like whatsoever. And I, I love the fact that um, this was probably in 2017 that Candace Owens called this. She said illegal is going to be the new black. Right. Mm -hmm. As far as a, a, a voter base or, or people that is going to be catered to. And you see that happening in grand fashion when they turn a blind eye to a literal crisis at the daggone border that's been talked about on end nonstop when it comes to us on the right. And when we, you, you take a trip to the southern border, which they won't do because then they're going to be held to account. But it's, it's but really remember, sad. he went there in 08. So he definitely, oh, yeah, he right. de he definitely he, understands. He and, drove and, by, and, by and, maybe. Yeah. It's VP. possible that he might have drone drove by. The VP strategy, Kamala Harris the strategy went to, uh, is genius, too. Stephen, that you bring up what they're doing. What mm -hmm. Candace Owens mentioned mm -hmm. is happening. In New York a couple weeks ago, they gave non-U.S. citizens, was it close to like a million? 800,000, yep. The ability yep. to, vote to vote in the United States of America. So Non-citizens. These people are very good. The crap. I give them credit. They're yeah. great at what they do. Right. They don't play fair. Yeah. They cheat. They rig everything they possibly can. Absolutely. And they use policy and legislation to make it look acceptable and mm. new york is a perfect example of that because people don't understand what's happening at the border ends up coming into the united states and oh, yeah. starts changing things not only demographics mm -hmm. but the politics of the country and then it, it's going to lead to elections as well they Absolutely. know what they're doing they, they know yeah. exactly what they're doing there's but a reason we'll why that. they do sanctuary cities and sanctuary things and and, and all this sort of flying people and, and, and dropping them off in the interior of the United States of America. Like you said, they know exactly what they're doing. They have a, a plan mm -hmm. and they try to gaslight you and try to make it seem like, oh, you kooky conspiracy theorists. Oh, we're just being humanitarians. No, you are doing things like what they're doing in New York where now you're going to be allowed yeah. to vote mm -hmm. as a non-citizen. So what's the point of even being a citizen if you can vote anyways on uh, citizen affairs? Well, you talk about this idea of, wow, it's racist to even ask for someone's ID to vote. But I'm going to need to see your papers if you want to eat at this right. restaurant. Right. Like, right. Please, right. start thinking about sense. this. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. But that's what they're pushing in New York. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, I, I think if I had one word of advice for the president, he got a lot of heat and still continues to get a lot of heat for not talking to the press. This was his second Absolutely. standalone press conference. Uh, what I would say is the amount of heat that he gets for not talking to the press mm -hmm. is way less than the heat he gets when he actually does a press conference. So True. no matter how much True. heat he gets for not talking to the press, Mr. President, don't do any more press conferences. It's not good for your approval rating. Right. Uh, if those which were reasons. Which is at 33%. Which right is now. not good to begin with. Which yeah. is so interesting. His, his approval rating is at 33%. Uh-huh. 
this is with the media covering him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> with all the love and the catership, all that. Yeah. It's like when I when I when I uh, spot you on the bench press mm -hmm. and you do you know one thirty five, mm -hmm. uh, your mm -hmm. maximum weight. Ma ma uh, definitely maxing out. <laughs> <laughs> That's like yeah. What would you even be without me there? Right. Yeah. I I, I don't know. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It's yeah. a crap show. Yeah. I can't imagine if the media was uh, uh, serious or honest for one moment. For a week straight, if the media was honest for a week straight and showed showcased exactly what the Biden administration is doing for a week straight, I wonder how far those appro approval numbers would take. Oh, the electorate would change. Oh, at, at every, <laughs> just the whole but isn't that crazy that you said? That's, that's a really good point, man. Because if that actually happened, it would expose what's right. really taking place psychologically right. with the masses right now. Because there are millions of people in this country that yeah. believe that Biden, President Biden is great. Yes, yes. 33% of people do. And I don't want the country to flee. I, yes, yes, <laughs> okay. yes. There are people in this country that watch CNN religiously yes. and they believe that everything happening in this administration is great. I believe all 12 of those people. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. They are so excited about CNN Plus. Oh, oh man. they can't oh, wait. They're, they're ready, they're they dying. can't wait. <laughs> but I mean, even, even CNN was uh, pushing back on some of these comments too. So it's like, whoa. They'll like do it for actually, a day yeah. <laughs> and then flip back. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Where it's just like, all right, we'll have some big comments, push people to the site. Mm -hmm. CNN Plus, Chris Wallace is going to be there. We'll see you there too. <laughs> it's, Probably it's the crazy. minorities. But coming up next for one last thing, we are going to taste test Girl Scout cookies and rate them. See you in three minutes. You have to ask the question, how is the most heavily funded tribe have the poorest population. Listen to me. Uh -huh. My country is very because everything problem here. Don't have petroleum for bush and Cuban, for car, for life, yeah. for nothing. And, and it sucks. Socialism sucks. There's no other way you can describe it. Do you like guns? Do you like ammo? Do you like suppressors? Do you like freedom? Do you love America? Do you like baseball? Do you like rifles? Do you like 9mm? Do you like pistols? Join me, Paige Rue, every week on Reloaded. Good ranchers, straight from the American farm. 100% American meat, 100% of the time. Delivered straight to your door. Wait, are those my Good Rancher steaks? I'll be taking these. Claim your 10 free Bistro Filets with your next order with promo code TPUSALIVE at GoodRanchers.com. This is your brain on socialism. Any questions? Getting older, my young age. Live. Rock and roll. <laughs> hey guys, Don't mind we're us. back for one last thing. Welcome back to TPUSA so Live. Drew, Drew's already getting into Snacking it. Snacking already. Yeah. 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 Cheat day right now. Cheat day. Let's get it this in. This is That's collusion. Wait, he's, yes. he's, he's engaging in cookie election con con collusion. Uh, yeah, cookie That's conclusion. conclusion. Election <laughs> interference with the cookies. <laughs> Co cookie illusion. <laughs> cookie illusion. Yeah. <laughs> Drew Hernandez, Joe Bob, Magahulk, Stephen Davis. I'm John Root. We're going to taste test and start rating 
Girl Scout cookies. Mm. And do you guys remember when Amy Coney Barrett um, got into I'm the so Supreme curious Court? how you're going to work the Supreme yeah. Court justice into <laughs> the Girl Scout cookies. cookies. <laughs> Watch this. Sorry, go ahead. They congratulated her and then deleted the tweet. Oh, I yeah. You, I don't know if you remember, I remember that. Remember that. Yeah. That was wild. I just want to say this for all of the woke tards out there. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the patriarchy. <laughs> Men giving their opinions on girl <laughs> Boom. Scout, Scout cookies. cookies. I think they would all appreciate if we called them they, them cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Non-gender Is this even appropriate no. anymore? <laughs> to, like, to brand this? I think I think what we should start with is the worst ones. These Who are short, buying these? Oh, are we just, short I bread. thought we were just eating them. The I'm short sorry. bread. That's, I'm going to start with these. Where <laughs> Let's break bread with some, some of this right here. This is just a plain mm. cookie. These this is tree, trash. Tree this is John Root of Baby Cookies. <laughs> <laughs> just plain white, no extra sugar to it. It's just... No flavor. Mm. I have the yeah. oatmeal sandwich cookie with peanut butter filling. Mm. So mm. that could be... Okay. I don't care what, what, you, what, what How I'm would you rate that out of that. 10? Um, maybe like a solid 6, 7. Ooh. 6.7 or 6 or 7? 6 or 7. That's a rookie score. Wow. A true score <laughs> has a decimal point. As we all know, maybe. Daddy Dave Portnoy doing his pizza reviews. I think that's how we should do this. Yeah. Well, those are pretty right? good. Mm. I like them. Yeah. Mm. Well, what's this about? They do have s'mores. Mm. Oh. They have s'mores. I don't think I've had one of these before, but s'mores are always tasty. And Cheers to that. I know um, Ruby that works on the TPUSA Live team, shout out to her for picking up all these Girl Scout mm -hmm. cookies. She, she told us the other day, hey, I saw Girl Scout cookies. I think the boys should rate them. Absolutely. And, and we should eat them. I've never had these, but she also did say that the Girl Scouts told her, if you put these in the microwave, mm. and it's got that real wow. sweet feel to it. So this is not microwave, but I'll give it a, give it a nice little taste test. So the thing is, you shouldn't have to go an extra step when it comes to a Girl Scout cookie. You should just be able to take it out the box and eat them. Yeah. I shouldn't have to put them in the microwave for it to be better. Mm. Okay, so I, that's my first complaint. Yeah, that's a that's a good call there because mm. if you mm. yeah, any work that I have to do on my own, Can't immediately do it. down a score. I'm mad. What are please. these called? Have you been what called one of these before? What's that? White on the outside, black. Oh no, Oreo. <laughs> Got it. Well, any of those. Haven't you been called that before on the internet? Yeah, a couple times. A time or two. <laughs> but what what I will say though, if we're gonna say our, our favorite Girl Scout cookies. Mm -hmm. Samoas are the best Girl Scout cookie. And yes. I don't think there's a debate. Excuse me? Yeah. There, there's, Samoas? Excuse me? No, there's no debate. That's it. Would you, would, would you like to rephrase that, please? No, no questions, please. Because Samoas I have be like the, the old President Biden. I'm not taking questions about this. I'm not taking pushback. Mm. This is the number one cookie. The Thin Mint. Hmm. This Why? is number one. Coming Why? from the guy that wouldn't wear a blue blazer. Yeah. I want to hear the explanation. I am, I am non-conforming. Why is yeah? Why, why is, why is that the best one? Well, it's because it's black. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, now. I thought y'all knew this by now. <laughs> this is number one. Okay, chocolate on the inside, some daggone chocolate on the outside, mm, and it's wonderful because <laughs> everyone loves these, and these are always sold out when it comes to Girl Scout cookies. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't love them. Well, I'm just not a big. You don't have to have I'm any not of them. a big mint guy. Even like mint chocolate chip ice cream yeah. or mint stuff. I'm just. I, I'll take mint and gum, but mint desserts. I'm just not a big fan of. I will. I'll tell you one thing. Samoas are delicious. Also, the cookies taste pretty good. <laughs> Nothing surpasses a thin mint that's frozen. You got it. This. <laughs> this might. Sorry. A frozen thin mint. You're right. Uh, those. Those are the bomb. This might be my number two tagalongs. Mm. Okay, you're wrong. These but are that's good because I feel like it's got like a, a Reese's <laughs> feel to it. Unbelievable. You're just here to just create more way. division. Hmm. You want one of those? That's Perfect. empty! <laughs> you liar! You deceived there's, me! There's one of those. These Drew, are what's actually pretty Drew, good. Drew, what's your, what's your favorite? Is this peanut butter? These, these are brownie. Indulgent, ooh, I like the title of this. Mm -hmm. Indulgent brownie inspired cookies with caramel flavored cream and a hint of sea salt. Goodness gracious. That does sound delicious. I'm 100% gonna have a tummy ache if I eat one of those. Right here. <laughs> I don't eat another cookie. This is right here. Also a right tummy there. ache? Yeah, I'm going to partake of some of these right here, Steve. <laughs> yes, John, mm -hmm. tummy ache. Just the, just the name alone makes me want to try one. Mm. You see what I'm saying? It's a good marketing. It's all about that branding, man. Also, it's good about that. You know what it would have been so much better yesterday for those two hours? Just have President Biden just eating Girl Scout cookies <laughs> while receiving these questions. It would have been less of a threat to national security <laughs> if he did that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, 
Honestly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's how President Vladimir so, Putin views so, so, anyways. So what do you say to the people uh, that think you got a cognitive decline? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> True national pressure. But man, it's true international pressure. And that would be valid. That would be valid. <laughs> Girl Scout cookies that, came that would be today. That would be a great two hours. That would be. But hopefully this was a great hour for you. But coming up next, we got Benny on the block. He's hitting the streets of Florida and he's asking Floridians, what's going on with these gas prices? They're going to the moon. Nobody likes that. No Drew like Hernandez, that. Joe Bob, MAGA Hulk, Stephen Davis. Mm. Big Thin Mint guy, but man, <laughs> thank you. Shalomish Arjavash. <laughs> Enjoy tomorrow. We got exclusive interviews for Ampest. See you later. Welcome to our first ever political correctness and inclusivity training. First off, safety. Just want to make sure that everyone here is jabbed, right? Just kidding, none of my business. So I'm Dylan, I'm your HR rep. A little bit about me. I'm a white man, and I'm so sorry if that makes any of you uncomfortable. On to the first order of business today. We're gonna to be talking about diversity. And Josh, did you have anything you wanted to say? Donate style at Biblioteca. I'm from Colorado. I learned that from Dora. Okay, second order of business. This is a mental health friendly workplace. Yes, Alex. Um, if we're really a mental health friendly workplace, what are we doing about the suicide rate of the birds? Because I saw two dead birds in the parking lot yesterday. Alex, shut up. Yeah, there's been a really big disregard for the bird lives ever since people in the office started sharing the birds are not real meme. Uh, birds are definitely real. Uh, the government's putting chips in their brain, which is making them self-destruct and kill themselves. And we have to be talking about the real issues or what are we doing here at all? Bird lives matter. No, they don't. Yes, they do. That's what BLM stands for. That's not what it stands for. She brings this up every time. Why is Mitchell in a poke card? Why are the snacks always not like that? Why are the snacks always not like that? Why are the snacks always not like that? I think this went really well. All in all, this is a great place to work, and we're becoming more politically correct every single day. Look at that gas price right there, almost $4 a gallon, four bucks a gallon, just like that across the country. Some places, five, $6 gallon of gas, insanity. National averages are showing gas skyrocketing. And why? Because of the communism of the left. They're canceling pipelines, they're shutting down jobs, and they're shutting down energy for this country. We are asking here in Florida, people what they think about the skyrocketing gas prices and what well, are they going to do about it? How high is too high for gas? I can't wait to hear what they have to say. Let's go find out. So we have people from the tyranny state of Michigan. Gas prices, I don't know if you drove down here from Michigan. You're probably in the bread lines now if you did that, because gas prices are going insane. Me too, but, um, you know, absolutely. I mean, they're almost three bucks a gallon in Michigan now. And, you know, food prices have gone up. I mean, it's typical, you know, of when we have an elected, elected president that is blue. Everything goes up, stock market goes down. That's typically what happens. Dirty communists. Yes. Absolutely. What do you think about gas prices? Do you think they're too damn high? No, I don't. Um, compared to Europe, there we pay very little in um, gas prices. Yeah, I just compare it to that, and I think we're fortunate. It's not as high as other countries. What the f are you talking about, man? Gas prices are going up. What do you think about that? I won't lie. I just moved from Chicago, where I didn't have a car, so. To me, they're all the same. Is this fun for you? I just got a car. <laughs> it's been a, quite a few years, like six years, I didn't have a car. Okay. Yeah. Do you drive? I do. Okay. Drive. Gas price is creeping up a little bit. They say they're going to go pretty high. Yeah. What, what's the gas price you wouldn't pay? What would you be like, I cannot believe this is $9 a gallon? Well, $9 a gallon. I'd be like, I guess I'm fing walking. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drive down from Maine. 
Because gas prices. Gas prices are going up. It was, it was, Biden's already ruined our gas. I can't even tell you how much I spent coming down here. It was crazy. How much? Like 400 You hear that, John? 400 to drive down from Maine? $400. I'm only burning my half. All you care about is money. You got, you got mouths to feed. You got a beautiful family. You got to buy groceries. It's got to be alarming. You look at the bill. My wife comes home and is like, I, you wouldn't believe it this time. How much? $62,581.43. Yeah, my husband doesn't like when I come home, I, I hide the receipts because he <laughs> tends to get a little uh, panicky, you know, when he sees the food bills, honestly, yeah. because the, the prices are just going way up. What did it cost? Everything. We're asking about gas prices though, yeah, right? Prices, okay. The cost of everything's going up. What do you think about that? It's definitely not good because pay's not going up, so it makes it harder as far as the cost of living for people to succeed and just, I'm not sure what the answer is. Uh, government doesn't seem to care too much though, that's for sure. They want us against each other, so stick together. And um, yeah, that's, that's the only answer I, I have, to stick together and um, screw the gas prices and everything that's going on right now. It's not fair, but what can we do about it, you know? Just gotta work hard and shut up and work harder, you know? What a patriot. He's exactly right. The government does want us to hate each other, and most Americans love each other. 99.9% .9 of Americans love each other. Yeah, love this I country. Agree. I yeah. agree. That's right, that's right. I already won the lottery. I was born in the U.S. of A, baby. Gas prices too, too damn high. Of course. Yes. I represent the rent is too damn high party. They canceled the Keystone Pipeline. What do you think's going to happen? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now they shut down another pipeline. Not good. Right. All, all the while, now they're charging up for all these electric batteries and all these new technologies in the electric vehicles. They not realize they got to mine all the lithium and they've got uh, all the wind turbines and stuff that pollute the air and leak oil and coolant into the environment. But we don't think about that, do we? We don't want to talk about that. Yep. Okay, so let's say Sleepy Joe wakes up from his coma, applesauce on his face, he's watching this right now. What's your message to him about gas prices, about the crazy inflation going on right now? <sighs> Sleepy Joe, um, gosh, there's not even a message because that party, it's just typical of, of the Democratic Party. I want to show you something. It's my shocked face. <gasps> I don't know. And we, we need to, in four years, get somebody... Um, in line to be elected and patriots need to rally and, and, and get a, a strong R and go red in, in four years. These ain't opinions. These are facts. Yes. Dirtbag communists just want us to hate each other. Not good. No, the no, government. No. Get rid Can you run for president? What's going on? When do you run for office? What's going on? Well, you should run for office. I'd vote for I'd you in a heartbeat. I, I'd vote for you, man. Maybe we both should do it. You know, in Boston. What's this accent? Uh, Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Yeah, okay. yeah, Rhode Island. Island. Yeah, yeah. Island. Just yeah, we yeah we just moved to the area uh, a couple months ago. So you moved here. Uh, well, to Tampa. Yeah. Tampa, yeah. about an hour from here. Yeah. So things got pretty bad with COVID back home. You know, prices going up, but people are unemployed. So you know how the heck you're gonna deal with that? So we moved down south where it's a little less strict, and you know we could maneuver around and figure things out. You know. And gas prices, like in Maine, I think we were at almost a dollar eighty-six, and now we're at like three seventy-two. Oh here. my god! Yeah, it was below a dollar. It was like ninety-nine cents in some places Absolutely. under Trump. Yeah, and now Biden's like communism. We, we need Trump back. Trump twenty twenty-four or sooner than that. <laughs> we have people that are stupid. Let's talk. Let's talk about it because we got a show and we got millions of people who watch this show. Let's talk. Let's educate the kids here first. What was your name? Jake. Jake. Okay. Hey, Jake. Jake's gonna help us. This is Schoolhouse Rock here. Conjunction, junction, what's their function? When you drive an electric car, chances are in this country, chances are about 99% in this country, your electric vehicle is charged through a coal-fired power plant. You don't say. Yo. Really? You know what that's called? That's called a fossil fuel. Yeah, because it's like a fossil in the ground, like a dinosaur bone. No more communism, okay? No more communism, and the gas prices, too damn high. Yeah, we, know, we know communism well. Uh, how so? We're from Michigan. Oh, John, another Michigander here. Big Gretch, coming in. It's hard here, because like, it's so hot. Like, where are you gonna walk? You're gonna have a heat stroke after like a mile. <laughs> 
and having a new structure standing in Yeah, the for real. Yeah. So, like, you gotta just pay it, I guess. Yeah, Invest right. in a Prius. Tesla. Yeah. A Tesla, yeah. Tesla. Oh, a Tesla. That'd be great. Oh, I would like a Mustang Mach E. Like, it's like a little, it's like a Mustang, but it's like eco friendly. Okay. <laughs> I do not understand what you spend your money on. What do you say? What do you say to people that are really nervous about gas prices? They're like, oh my God, the gas prices are going to go up really high. Uh, It'll pass. You should It'll meditate pass. about it. <laughs> Go to the gas station to meditate, John. That's what we must do. Um, everybody sit on the floor, Indian style like me. Oh my God, if you're wearing a dress, please keep your knees together. Nobody wants to see that. Um, yes. Like we're all gonna die anyway, so who cares, you know? Do you want to die alone? Yes. <laughs> But America has far greater gas reserves than Europe, so it's like our gas is cheaper because we have gas. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Um... Six and a half hours later. What would be too high a gas price? Uh, $5 a gallon would be too high. Yeah. $5 right now in California. Uh, you can see, yeah, yeah, you can see gas prices in California because there's a lot of gas tax there. Is that too high? Uh, probably not in California, because the cost of living is further. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're in California, you're screwed. Yeah, sorry. Okay. What would be the price? Yeah, that's right. What would be the price where you're like, that, those, these are out of control? $5? If it hit $5 here in Florida, would you be very upset? I would live with it. This is a load of barnacles. I would live with it. It's part of what you have to deal with, so you just cut back on other things. No, don't like that. How high is too high? Well, gas is too damn high, that's for sure. That's what we heard from people all around the country today in Florida when we were talking with them about gas prices that are, look at that, close to $4 a gallon and it's much worse in other parts of the country. They said gas is too damn high. Some people spent hundreds of dollars to drive their family to Florida in a vehicle. This is insanity, but this is what you get under the communist policies of the left, okay? So careful who you support here in America. You might get much worse than that. We'll find out if we can afford it when we drive to our next location, Benny on the Block, next week. See you then. How much does the earth cost? I'm gonna buy the entire earth. Hey everyone, John Root here. Stick around because coming up next on TPUSA Live, Alex Clark brings you a new explosive episode of Politics, breaking down Jamie Lynn Spears' media tour drama, Kanye West saying he'll beat up Pete Davidson in his new song, Pop Culture Rewind, and so much more pop culture without the propaganda, next on Politics. Yeah, let me see the new app and drink a big dragon muffin. Tag your BFF who's got to take a pic of her food before she eats it and say, this you? I'll tell you one thing, it sure me. Hey, real talk though, in my car, I got snacks. Would you mind uh, getting my snacks for me? Huh? No. Here's what we're talking about today. The Free Britney drama is at an all time high. Britney Spears sent her sister, Jamie Lynn, a cease and desist. Call her daddy fans have turned on host Alex Cooper and are calling for her cancellation. Is Pete Davidson scared after Kanye West threatened to beat him up? Leonardo DiCaprio is making false claims about climate change. Again, Michael Phelps is a coward and I've got the pop culture rewind. See, it's a lot of stuff. I'm Alex Clark and this is Politics. Every time I open Instagram, I swear, Britney has posted another scathing drag of her little sister. Don't make that face at me, I hate that face. This is my only face. I don't have a lot of faces. 
the middle of Jamie Lynn's media tour about her new book, Britney's lawyer sent her a cease and desist, warning her to stop talking about Britney to promote the book, even if the book technically isn't about Britney. She's just talking about her in the interviews. When comes along, you must zip it. Zip it good. The letter says publicly airing false or fantastical grievances is wrong, especially when designed to sell books. It is also potentially unlawful and defamatory. It goes on to demand she cease and desist from referencing Britney derogatorily during your promotional campaign. If you fail to do so or defame her, Britney will be forced to consider and take all appropriate legal action. Ooh, do you think that's fair? <laughs> Jamie Lynn isn't the only person getting fallout from this media tour she's on for her book either. Because Alex Cooper from Call Her Daddy interviewed her this week, fans are turning on her and saying her show should be canceled. Let's get into it. Okay. You have a text message that clears your name from your sister. Can you pull out your phone and read that recent text from Brittany? Do I have my phone? says to me. The Jamie Lynn interview was supposed to be a two-parter, but now it looks like the video promoting the second half of the podcast has been deleted from the Call Her Daddy Instagram. It could be because of the cease and desist, or it could be because Alex is getting so much hate. 99% of the comments under it were negative. Meanwhile, The Sun is claiming that Oprah will do Britney's first sit-down televised interview. Please, 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 be the case. I want to host a huge watch party at TPSA headquarters if that happens. Would that be fun? Brittany unfollowed Jamie Lynn on Instagram. She recently referred to her as a mean ass. Kanye West and the Game released a song last week, and in it, Kanye threatens to beat up Pete Davidson. He raps, God save me from that crash, just so I can beat Pete Davidson's ass. I love that, Dr. Seuss poem. In 2002, Kanye was in a bad car accident, if you didn't know, that left him with a broken jaw. One thing I know, my girl ain't no hobbit. She might be stumpy, that don't mean she a hobbit. An insider told Page Six, Pete thinks it's totally hilarious. And not just that, he thinks the whole tabloid drama with him, Kanye, and Kim is hilarious. He loves it. I want to fight you. The source went on to say that it's funny to him that the press wants to know his every move all of a sudden and that the whole craziness with Kanye last week has brought Kim and Pete closer. And nothing I am doing is working. You know Ashley Iconetti and Jared Haven from Bachelor in Paradise? They're pregnant with their first baby and they're naming him Dawson after Leonardo DiCaprio's character Jack Dawson in Titanic. <laughs> If you know them at all, you know they are obsessed with movie references, so I actually love this. It's too bad Leonardo DiCaprio isn't more like Jack Dawson and less like himself, because Leo is kind of a tubby idiot now. In a recent Deadline interview, he falsely claimed that the United States per capita is the largest polluter in the world. This, of course, is a blatant lie. Data shows that China is actually the number one emitter of CO2 in the world per capita. He also said we only have nine years left because of climate change. I have deja vu. The world is gonna end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. Oh no! If the world ends in nine years, little Dawson may have to reenact the end scene of Titanic and hold on for dear life as Earth's pollution takes over. Let's hope Rose will leave room for him on that door. Ate too many beignets. My butt's too big for you to fit. That moment when Michael Phelps is asked point blank about transgender people competing in women's sports, and this is what he has to say. Because it has to be a level playing field. I think that's something that, that we all need. Um, because it's, it, like, that's what sports are. Uh, and, and for me, um, I, I don't know where this is going to go. I don't know um, what's going to happen. Um, I, I believe that we all should feel comfortable with who we are in our own skin. Um, but I think sports should all be played at an even playing field. I don't know what that looks like in the future, um, but it's, 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 it's hard. It, it, it's a really, it, I, I, honestly, I, I don't know it's what complicated. to say. Uh, it, it's complicated. It's very complicated. It's very complicated? People should feel comfortable in their own skin, but sports should be an even playing field? Oh, you almost had it. 
You're gonna be quicker than that. It's actually not complicated at all, Michael. He knows it's wrong by admitting sports should be an even playing field, but was too cowardly to come right out and say it's unfair, it's wrong, and it needs to stop. Sounds like just another athlete appealing to the mob. If you find little tiny girl balls that are so tiny and shriveled up, let me know. Are you curious about what happened this week in pop culture history? Well, my darling, step into my little pink time machine and let's find out. This is the Pop Culture Rewind. This week in 1953, Lucy on I Love Lucy had a baby and over 70% of the country's TVs were watching. Never before had anyone been pregnant or had a baby on TV. Lucy and her husband even slept in separate beds on the show. This whole thing was extremely scandalous in 1953. Honey, no. Yes. Really? Yes. Why didn't you tell me? Well, you didn't give me a chance. Are you kidding? No. It's me! <laughs> In 1998 this week, for the first time, everyone found out about the Monica Lewinsky-Bill Clinton affair because it was published by conservative Matt Drudge on the Drudge Report. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work for the American people. Then, in 2003 this week, Chappelle's show debuted on Comedy Central. Anyhow, here with the weather is our old pal, reliable, friendly, portly, Big Al. Happy Reparations Day. Happy Juneteenth. <laughs> just kidding. Chuck, I don't know if you know this, but I just handed in my resignation here at New Center three hours ago. And I'll tell you something else you probably didn't know. And that is this. This is not my real speaking voice. Actually, Chuck, this is my real speaking voice. I talk like straight up gangster bitch. And in 2006 this week, High School Musical was broadcast on the Disney Channel. I thought I could feel a bug. It isn't a bug. Now you just thought it was something, girl. Uh, I just thought it was, was something. something cool. And that's what happened this week in pop culture history. Tonight, the DJ's gonna fall in love with me again. I definitely butchered those lyrics. No, tonight at midnight Eastern, a brand new episode of The Spillover drops on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Hint, it is a celebrity guest who you guys tagged in the comments telling them to come on the show. Yes, our little experiment worked. Even I can't believe it. At 9 p.m. Eastern, right here on the Politics Instagram, we will announce who it is. Who's your guest, though? First. Okay, bye! No, not Cookie Monster. Part this episode of Politics. Discuss in the comments if you think Britney cease and desist is fair, what you think of the name Dawson for a boy, and what you think the best Disney Channel original movie is. The right answer is my date with the president's daughter. If you know, you know, and if you don't, you don't. DM this episode to one friend and just say, you're a potato, nothing else, and hit that save button. You should know this by now because it gives the episode superpowers in the algorithm. We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, and trust me, out of all the politics episodes we've ever done, tomorrow's especially is one you are not going to want to miss. It'll be smashing. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. Support Politics, the first ever conservative pop culture daily show by subscribing to our channel, turning on notifications, and of course, hitting the thumbs up. Also, our main home is on Instagram. Seriously, just trust me, that's where the real magic happens. Follow us there at Poplitics.